For 2017, there are major changes to the chassis, larger tyres and stronger aerodynamics. But what impact does that have on the power unit? The power unit's principal aim is to propel the car down the straight. Now, if the tyres are stronger and if the aerodynamics are stronger, the straight actually starts a little bit earlier because the driver can get on full power sooner and the straight actually finishes a little bit later because the driver can come on the brakes later. So the period of full throttle increases and it's increasing considerably. It's increasing by just over 10%, which equates to just over five seconds extra full throttle time. Now, the engine's limited in fuel flow rate. So it's limited to 100 kilograms per hour fuel flow rate. But if the time's going up by plus 10%, then the total amount of fuel that will be used per lap is gonna go up by plus 10%. Now, last year, the limits for the race distance were 100 kilograms of fuel. Now, that's a limit that was set in 2014, and it was maintained through 14, 15, and 16 and through efficiency improvements of all the manufacturers, we all ended up at a point where typically for a race distance, we needed less than that. So the starting point is less than that. The increased amount for this year is plus 10%. Where the regulations have been set to, it's not 100, it's been set at 105 kilos of fuel for the race. And that feels like it still means that you need to be efficient with the aerodynamics and efficient with the power unit, but we won't have all the ridiculous fuel saving scenarios that we had in 2014. So that's a major change for the power unit. One of the consequences of having an extra five, 10% of, of fuel, five kilos uh, available, an extra 10% used per lap is that that the waste energy, the engine's very efficient, but it's not 100% efficient, so there is some waste energy. How do you get rid of that waste energy? So we've had to put a lot of effort into the cooling system on the engine to get that waste energy out of the piston, out of the cylinder head, out of the crankcase, out of all the bearings. Transmit that to the car, and the cooling packages on the car need to increase as well. The last change, although not regulated, but an absolute critical aspect, is the durability of the engine. And this is both in terms of the number of revolutions you can do, the number of qualifying laps you can do, but also the structural load. If the car goes through the corner quicker, because the tires are stronger and the aero is quicker, the lateral load on the car is higher. And the power unit is a critical structural element of the car. Right in the middle of the car, engine mounts front and rear connected to the chassis and the gearbox. So we've had to do a lot of detailed analysis on those. The engine's a little bit heavier as a consequence of that, but the structural stiffness has been ma maintained. The strength of the car has been maintained. This year also, we're going from five power units before we get a grid penalty down to four. And so a big extra demand on each of those power units, both in terms of the heat that's going through it, the structural load, and the kilometers that each of those power units needs to do.